The one true God of the universe, the Father of our Lord Christ Jesus, is love. He is a happy God who is at peace with his entire creation. He loves all things without limits. The love of God is unconditional, unwavering and relentless. His grace toward us is unmerited. We can't earn his grace through our accolades or our works of the flesh. You can't impress him, nor do you need to please him. You're pleasing to him right now. He loves you with a love that can't be expressed in words. God's desire is for his entire creation to know and feel this love, for his entire creation to be filled full with his agape love. In order to reveal to creation his vast love with which he loves us, God himself locked up his entire creation in sterminus. He blinded their apprehensions, causing them to stray from his light. At first this seems counterintuitive. If it's God's desire to see his creation, understand and feel his love, why blind them? Well, the reason God blinded his own creation, locking them up in the stubbornness of their own vanity, is so he can be merciful to them. Only after receiving the grace of God, after many trials and sins, will you understand the depths of God's love for you. You will know the love of God after you transgress the law, and are aware that you deserve nothing but death, yet you received the opposite. The greatest way God shows his love is to love those who deserve the opposite, to grace those that deserve death for all the sins that they've committed, to love those that don't love him back. That is the love of God. God shows his love to us by saving us sinners, all of us, in spite of what we did. He saves us no matter our actions. You know why? Because that's what unconditional love looks like. It was him who placed all of us, all of humanity, all of creation, it was him orchestrating our lives from their beginnings to their ends. He shows his grace to the creation that he himself blinded by making salvation completely out of him, so we can glorify him and not ourselves. The genius of God is that he purposely locked up the creation that he created in stubbornness, so he could send his son, Jesus Christ, to be the saviour, therefore revealing to the stubborn the love and grace that he has for us. He does this so we can praise him, so we can glorify him. He wants his love to be in all of creation and to be reflected to all of his creation. And those who have experienced the saving grace of God know the depths, heights, length and width of God's love. For they understand that they are nothing without him. They deserve nothing but death. They cannot keep the law. They just keep on sinning no matter what they do. They know, because of this, that the only thing that can save them is grace, the grace of God. It's all about contrast. He first gave us the law, so the law, with all 613 of them, could reveal more sin in us. God did not give us the law to prevent the sin from increasing. In actuality, he sent the law so we could all collectively realize that we cannot save ourselves, but instead to rely solely on him. We can't keep the law. The law is spiritual and we are fleshly. The law is perfect, we cannot keep it. Our attempts at keeping it only reveal more sin in us, which in turn gives God more opportunities to lavish his grace upon us. But the scripture, or law, locks up all together under sin, that the promise out of Jesus Christ's faith may be given to those who are believing, because, by works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight, for through law is the recognition of sin. Think about that. For we are aware that the law is spiritual, yet I am fleshly, having been disposed of under sin. For all sinned, all of humanity, and are wanting of the glory of God. The law is designed to highlight sin in us. We cannot keep the law because we'd have to be perfect in order to keep it. And if we were perfect, we'd know no sin, meaning we wouldn't need to be saved, which would mean we'd never get to understand the true depths of the love and grace of God. God gave Moses the law so it would be more apparent to us that we needed a saviour. We sin so God can lavish his unending grace onto us, like a waterfall that never ends. God locked up all of creation under sin and death, the curse of Adam, so he could reveal to us how much he truly loves us by saving us.
where God locks up all, all of creation together in stubbornness or unbelief, that he should be merciful to all. For to vanity was the creation subjected, not voluntarily, but because of him who subjects it in expectation, that the creation itself also shall be freed from the slavery of corruption into the glorious freedom of the children of God. O oh, the depths of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and untraceable his ways! For who knew the mind of the Lord, or who became his advisor? Or who gives to him first, and it will be repaid him, seeing that out of him, and through him, and for him, is all. To him be the glory for the eons. Amen. All things are of God. All of creation is in accord with the counsel of God's will. Everything that's ever happened, every single occurrence, every event, both small and great, good and evil, it's God himself manifesting it, second to second, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is no one apart from me, I am Yahweh, and there is no other, former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil, I, Yahweh, make all these things. God is telling us a story in real time. He locked up his entire creation in unbelief, so he could pour out his grace onto us. You can't do that to someone who hasn't transgressed the law, hence why it's impossible to keep. Everything happens for a reason. Everything is progressing to the grand crescendo, the consummation of all of creation, where everything in existence is filled full with God himself and his vast love. We are all growing and maturing into the realization of God and his vast love. The law serves as an escort to the son of his love, Christ Jesus. Now before the coming of faith, we were garrisoned under law, being locked up together for the faith about to be revealed, so that the law has become our escort to Christ, that we may be justified by faith. Now at the coming of faith, we are no lot longer under an escort, for you all are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Having perceived that a man is not being justified by works of law, except alone through the faith of Christ Jesus, we also believe in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of law, seeing that by works of law shall no flesh at all be justified. Salvation is completely of God. It's not even our faith that saves us, but the faith of Christ. We can't add or take away from the cross. It's a complete, finished work that the entire creation will come into an awakening of at God's own appointed time. For in grace through faith are you saved, and this is not out of you, it is God's approach present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting. It was by God's hand that we were all put under sin and death, so also it was by God's own hand, by the grace of the Almighty and the faith of his Son are we saved from the same sin and death. None of our good works can accomplish what he has already accomplished. The secret of God's will was revealed to the Apostle Paul by the risen, glorified Christ Jesus and the believers of his body through Paul's 13 letters to the nations. Christ's body being the one designated beforehand to head up all of creation in Christ, making known to us the secret of his will in accord with his delight which he purposed in him. To have an administration of the complement of the errors to head up all in the Christ, both that in the heavens and that on the earth. And him in whom our lot was cast also, being designated beforehand according to the purpose of the one who is operating all, all of creation in accord with the counsel of his will. God himself and God alone operates everything. He locked up everyone in unbelief so he could have mercy on the same all of whom he locked up. He is revealing his infinite love to us all. Whoever you are, wherever you are in this dark world, know that God has placed you to be you, the person that you are right now. If you haven't come into the realization of the truth yet, don't worry, you will. It's in God's plan, it's God's will that you come into the realization of the truth. He will unlock your eyes, because he's the one who locked them up to begin with. Love, grace, and peace to you all. The 
eyes of your heart, having been enlightened.